I do think Bitcoin is going into the, the millions and, and tens of millions of dollars over the next 20 or 30 years. We're about 6.7% adoption rate globally with Bitcoin technology, which put us in 1993 with the telecom business. Over the next five years in the telecommunications business, it grew from about a 7% global penetration to around 30% in five years. And in 10 years, the adoption grew up to 60%. Bitcoin seems to be growing at a faster adoption rate than that. So within 60 months, we're probably going to be pushing somewhere around a 35 to 40% adoption rate. 100,000 Satoshi would buy you in the future is, is 20, 30 years from now is six months worth of living expenses. This stuff here is the true weapon of mass destruction in the world. The price of Bitcoin is going to have to go through the roof. I do think that going forward that the stock market will eventually get some of its value sucked out of it because we won't need to go there. We won't need to gamble so much with our money when our money itself has a store of value built into it. The idea of Bitcoin, the idea of sound money, the idea of digital scarcity, that's now planted in all our heads and it will never go away. Most people in the United States do not have a financial education. What our government has done is they become a master at using this technology to blur the information to steal your energy. I, I want to really start uh, the day in with, with your background because it's really interesting. You are 60 years old and you have a long background in telecommunications. So I was like, it's a, it's a perfect way of seeing the global adoption or comparing the global adoption from telecommunications with that from Bitcoin. Um, what did you learn from the global adoption that you saw over the last yeah, 50 years um, from that internet adoption, tele telecommunication adoption? Uh, what can you, what can we learn from that, from that? And how does this apply to, to Bitcoin? Sure. Yeah. Uh Yeah, I see a lot of parallels in the technology. I mean, you know, the cell phone industry was our biggest part of our te telecommunications business. Um, and the adoption of it changed the world. I mean, cell phones have changed the world. And I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful technology that's still changing the world today. The, uh, the telecommunications business, um, I started in, in, in 1993. And at the time I got into the business, we had about, globally speaking, we had about uh, a 7% market, uh, market adoption, uh, globally speaking, penetration, you might say. So it, uh, it, was, a good, it was a good 10 years from, from, two th from 1993 to 2003 were, were my glory days in my, in my life. They were my biggest years, my biggest earning years. And it was, It was the biggest explosion in the industry as far as adoption went. And I, and I think right now, if we look at where Bitcoin is and these technologies, blockchain, cryptocurrency technologies, we're, we're at that same inflection point. We're, we're at a 1993s moment. Um, I even looked it up and it looks like we're about 6.7% uh, adoption rate globally with, it, with Bitcoin technology, if the numbers are right. Uh, so if that's, if that's accurate, <clears throat> we're... Right about the same, 7%, which put us in 1993 with the telecom business. So over the next, uh, over the next five years in the telecommunications uh, business, it grew from about a 7% uh, global uh, penetration to around 30% in five years. And in 10 years, it, it, actually, it actually grew. It, it actually grew. Well, actually, uh, fast forwarding to to 15 years. So if we go from 2003 to 2008, the adoption grew up to 60%. Now, now Bitcoin seems to be growing at a faster adoption rate than that. So, so I think that if we're at 7% now within 60 months, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to be, we're probably going to be pushing somewhere around a 35 to 40% adoption rate with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin blockchain technologies over the next 10 years, it's going to be a fascinating ride. It's going to get really fun. The, the first 10 years in the telecommunications business, like I said, were my glory days. It was fun. I mean, yeah, it was the money was was coming in. I was having fun. And I see that and I feel that same feeling that I did in 1993, Robin, where I feel this is about to, to go mainstream. And if it does anything like the telecommunications business did over the next 10 years, just over the next 10 years, it's going to be life changing for so many people. The if they just if they can just have a a five to 10 year time frame and, and not this get rich quick mentality that a lot of people have, if they can just be a little bit patient. And if I can be patient at 60, um, 
I think they can be patient. Now, I did get in in 2017, so I've already seen some pretty good returns and pretty good gains with this technology. But I went down the rabbit hole very quickly. I, I seen it just like I did the telecommunications business when I got in. I seen the potential of what this technology was going to do. And in the telecommunications business, unfortunately, there was so much heavy lifting. You had to really risk things like leases and, you know, a lot of expenses and jeopardize bankruptcy to get into that industry. With, with Bitcoin, there's not so much heavy lifting. So you don't have to really, you know, uh, risk bankruptcy to, to, to get into Bitcoin. You just got to have a, a, a little bit of money and start putting it in over time. So I think the adoption rate is way ahead of where Bitcoin is, and it's going to continue to grow. Uh, imagine if 10 years from now, we're, we're at a 60% adoption rate. What's that going to look like uh, with, the, with the price of Bitcoin? It, 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 with, with a finite asset like this, it, it's hard to imagine where the price of Bitcoin is going to be over the next five to 10 years. I'm going to be on that train. You can't get me off. I'm going to be riding that train. And if I do need some money, I'll be trying to leverage it instead of selling it, you know, try to borrow against it. Um, there's some great areas to put it into, like the Roth IRA, like your last um, uh, Mark was talking about. It's a great place to, 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 to build up a Roth IRA with it. And so if, you, if you've got the time, uh, you know, I, I just started a Roth IRA a couple of years ago. If I can do it at my age, then a lot of your listeners can do it. And it's already growing like mad. Uh, so, you know, start making a plan. Because um, I can tell you with the adoption of the telecom business, this is following a, a similar path and this is going to be explosive. I don't think people are ready for what's about to happen, but um, I, I'm ready. So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight on that. Re really cool. Thank you. Um, you also said like that uh, currently Bitcoin is growing faster. Do you expect that to, to continue, that Bitcoin will grow faster in the future? And if so, why, why do you think uh, that Bitcoin grows faster? Is, is it because we already have telecommunications? Uh, well, yeah, obviously, it, it, we couldn't do it without the telecom business, right? We, we, you know, we need the Internet. We need cell phones. We, we need all this stuff to make this happen. And, and all, those, all, all that platform is already in place. So I think that's one of the reasons why this adoption, which is being built on top of that adoption, is going to grow so much faster because we don't have to build the infrastructure like we did in the early days with the telecom business. We had to build the infrastructure back then, and now we don't. It's already in place, so we can adopt this technology much quicker. Uh, and, and and why do I think it's going to happen? Why do I think I believe in it so certain is that who doesn't want better money? I mean, if somebody says they don't want Bitcoin, they just don't understand it because I think everybody on the planet wants better money, and I know I do. I want money that gains purchasing power over time instead of loses purchasing power over time. And when you're ready to talk about a little inflation, boy, I'm going to give you an earful. Yeah, inflation is a good. You, you said something before we talked, uh, before we recorded, something really uh, interesting. You don't have you you don't fear the man in the gun. Uh, you uh, yeah. the, the man in the gun. Uh, yeah. You fear uh, the man with the money printer. Like, right. Uh, why right. why that? Like, that's, yeah, that's amazing. You know, Growing up as a kid, um, you know, I lived in California my whole life. Uh, we were, as I look back on my childhood, you know, the, and, and it was actually much better back then, f far better than it is now, far safer. Um, we don't see all the social decay that we see now in the streets. But, you know, the only thing I feared back then was a bad person, right? You know, someone who was going to rob me, maybe steal my wallet, uh, you know, a little bit of money that I had in there. And uh, so I always feared the man with the, you know, it was going to rob me. Um, and, uh, or I say the man with a gun, right? Uh, and now I don't fear the man with a gun anymore. I, I, I fear the man with the money printer because, you know, the, the man, the man that robs you pretty much, he's, you know, he's going to steal your wallet. You know, that's about all he can get, but the man with the money printer can steal your dreams. And, you know, that's a, that's a serious price to pay. And so as I'm retired, and I'm trying to enjoy my life and safeguard my future against the you know, economic theft out there. I'm not worried about that man anymore, you know, on the street. That's not my biggest fear. It's it's the man with the money printer. Hope that explains it. And you, Orange, yeah, you, you said also that you are a lot boots on the ground. You're trying to orange pill a lot uh, in person. Um, okay. I'm always 
I'm really surprised by people not getting the inflation, the problem of it. Like if, if they maybe need a little longer of time for getting the solution, like getting Bitcoin and what they can do with it. Um, okay, that's fair. But wh why do you think that people have a hard time getting out of the euro, getting out of the dollar, getting out of that fiat inflation? It, it seems so obvious that it's bad. Right. Well, you know, that's a good point. And I, and I, and this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. Uh, I love to talk inflation. Uh, you know, the, one of the things I think that's slowing some of the younger generation down, Robin, is they haven't seen the inflation that somebody my age has seen, just like I haven't seen the inflation that, you know, somebody 20 or 30 years has seen, uh, you know, that are, that's older than me. So it, it's, they just haven't seen it yet. I'll give you an example. Um, I have it. I have some. I have some. I have something very dirty. I have to show you here. It's so dirty. I don't know if you can show it on your podcast, but it's dirty fiat. Okay. <laughs> so, so here, here's a couple old dirty fiat bills. I should have put gloves on probably before I handle this stuff. It's. I don't even like to touch it anymore. But these are some really old bills from 19. Uh, one of them's dated 1934. The others uh, dated 1928. And the reason I have two of them here is because I try to uh, look in my own life at the inflation that I've seen, because that's all I can compare is what I've seen since I've been a kid growing up. And um, when in 1974, I was 10 years old, Robin. Uh, and back then, the minimum wage was two dollars, two dollars an hour. So imagine that I, you had to work as, a, as an adult, you had to work, uh, you know, an hour to earn two of these. But the purchasing power of these was quite different back then. And I like to explain things in a simple way for people to understand and give them something to visualize when I talk about inflation. Because I don't think it's a, it's a hard thing for a lot of people to visualize. They just go into the grocery store, they go buy something and they know the price went up. But a lot of people don't think much further than that. They just know something's wrong, but they, they don't they don't have a lot to reflect on. And and being 60, I have more to reflect on than somebody at the age of 30 or my son. I have a 38, 38 year old son and um, he can't reflect on it as much as I can. So I'm constantly talking to him about it. By the way, he's a Bitcoiner as well. I orange pilled him. He was one of my first orange pills. Anyway, uh, the, the story that I'm trying to get to here is. In, in 1974, I, I would go in and buy an ice cream at, at the uh, we had this place called Thrifty's Ice Cream. I'm sure a lot of people in America that are listening to this understand what I'm talking about as far as Thrifty's Ice Cream. And to give you an example, I could have walked into Thrifty's Ice Cream when I was a kid. Imagine this. This is this is shocking. I could have walked into Thrifty's Ice Cream when I was a kid and with one of these bills, just a one dollar bill, Robin, in 1974. I could have treated 20 of my friends to a single scoop of ice cream with a cone. So imagine a line, 20 people. Now, this was five cents a scoop with a cone. Imagine 20 people. I could have treated my – actually, it's ironic. I could have treated every kid in my neighborhood. Literally, we had about 20 kids on the street. I could have treated every single one of them to an ice cream, went down and been the big man on the block, and with $1, I could have bought them all an ice cream. That's absolutely amazing. Now, to give you an idea how things have changed, um, about a month ago, my better half, which is Margaret, uh, her and I went down to my old stomping grounds, and the building was still there. It was not no longer a Thrifty's. It was a Rite Aid. Apparently, Rite Aid had, had bought out Thrifty's ice cream or bought, bought Thrifty's out and, and the ice cream uh, with it. So when I went into the store, we, we walked in there. I looked to the left and I didn't expect to see what I what I seen. I actually seen the same ice cream stand from 50 years ago that I used to buy ice cream at. It was still standing and it still said Thrifty Ice Cream, even though it was no longer a thrifty store. So I went over to it. There was a guy buying an ice cream is standing in line there. And I looked at the prices. Well, a scoop now with a cone is two bucks, a dollar ninety nine. But we'll round it off to two dollars. I think it's close enough. So now with this two dollars, I can't. I can buy one. I can buy myself, uh, you know, an ice cream and, and a cone. But 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 my 19 friends, they don't get one any longer. Now, if we want to take into consideration, obviously, wage growth, right? So I did the math on it, and I said, okay, well, what what is the minimum wage today 
and out here it's about $16 an hour. So you can earn 16 of these now instead of two. So that means that even with the wage growth, I can only buy eight people a cone and ice cream for an hour's worth of my economic energy. So imagine, um, imagine I could have bought 20 people a, a cone and an ice cream. Or actually, no, I take that back. With $2, if I worked an hour, I could have bought 40 people <laughs> for one hour's worth of my economic energy. 40 people. Imagine that line going out of the ice cream shop, right? 40. I got 40 people here I want to buy a, a scoop of ice cream and a cone with uh, for $2. Now I can only buy eight. So that gives you an idea that, you know, and I know it's just we're talking ice cream here, and that may sound kind of, you know, kind of ridiculous. But this just doesn't work with ice cream. This works with everything. And, and I'll give you another example of the first time. And that was actually the first time I saw inflation is, is in 1974 when I watched a, a, a scoop of ice cream go from five cents to 10 cents. That, that was my first uh, run in and bout with inflation is the prices of the ice cream went up. So as a kid, that was like, wow, what happened? You know, walk into the store and all of a sudden the price went up on the ice cream, you know, and everybody was talking about it. We didn't know what it was. It was my, you know, since since Nixon took us off the gold standard in 71, um, it took a few years before it, it kind of kicked in. And uh, the first place it showed up for me was in the was in the ice cream stand as a kid. So, you know, I, th I thought that would be something to share with your your listeners. Also, another uh, interesting fact of inflation in my life that I've seen is uh, we were driving around my old neighborhood that I grew up in. And, and I had a neighborhood, Robin, that had 20 homes on each side of the street. Uh, and in 1974, those homes were twenty five thousand dollars a piece. So. For a million dollars, Robin, you could have bought the entire neighborhood. Imagine that. A million dollars, you could have bought all 40 homes in the neighborhood for a million dollars in 1974. Now, we drove around that neighborhood, and the neighborhood didn't get better. The neighborhood, the neighborhood got awful. I mean, it, it's so much worse than I lived there, than when I lived there. And it was sad to see the, 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 the decay of my neighborhood. It was close to L.A. area. Um, but I, I looked at one of my friends in high school. I looked at, at his parents' home that was for sale, uh, and, and the, the father still lived there, and it was up for sale. So we decided to get out of the car and walk in and look at the home, and I grabbed a flyer on it. And so imagine 1974, $25,000 per home. Now the asking price was $695,000 for that same home. So for a million dollars, you could buy like one you know, 1.3 homes now instead of 40, you know, wages just aren't keeping up. So again, how do we protect ourselves from this, this debasement and this economic theft of our, of our, of our currency? Um, and I think Bitcoin's the best thing I've ever found. Now it's not the only thing that I invest in. I believe in a little bit more of diversification. You know, I, I like, a, I like a three-legged stool approach. Uh, you know, so I, I, I also like real estate and I also like some stocks, but Bitcoin, uh, it is a very uh, large portion of of that um, that plan. That, that's in such an interesting uh, comparison because when you talk of like, okay, you could have feed uh, forty people, uh, and then uh, uh, later you can only feed eight people. That's a five x like that's that is five x more expensive uh, than before. And this doesn't take into account that actually technology is getting better over time. So things should actually be deflationary. Like right. it should not even go up. So that's a major thing. I mean, I don't know how much fast and better we can get in, in producing ice cream because <laughs> producing ice cream, I have no clue how to produce ice cream actually, but I, I guess the, 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 the bare method is not as changing maybe we could even make an argument that the ice cream we get now is a little bit more unhealthy than we, we got it uh, a few a few decades ago uh, but i am not an ice cream expert so i cannot really make that argument but i, I could imagine that it's actually uh, like that um but then when we think about the the importance of sound money then because when you compare like okay how many ice creams you can get but you cannot really store the ice creams but maybe you can bought have bit uh, you could have 
bought gold with that or really good stock or whatever that holds the inflation a little bit better and keeps up with it. Um, and then when we think of the current state right now with Bitcoin uh, and where inflation, I think, is really starting uh, in, in, the next, <laughs> in the next few decades, because money printer, the more money you print, the more money you have to print, the more money you print, you the more money you then also have to print. So like it's a, a, a virtual cycle. Um, what will the importance be of like, let, let's say a hundred thousand Satoshis uh, now is not a lot of money, but uh, what, what will that be? What, what do you think will 100,000 Satoshis represent when we look out uh, 20 years from now or 30 years from now uh, when we are at this 60, 70 uh, percent of, of adoption rate, uh, what you talked before about um, that, like, what, what do you, do you have a framework to, to think about the, the, the purchasing power, not the, not I, I try to not focus on the on the US dollar equivalent. Uh, I try to focus on like what the importance of uh, 100,000 satoshis could be in like 20 years. Well, that's yeah, that that's a, you know, that's anybody's guess, but I, but if I had if I had to guess based on where I think Bitcoin's going and and I I do think Bitcoin is going into the the millions and and tens of millions of dollars over the next 20 or 30 years. Um, so, you know, dividing that by, a, you know, by 100,000 Satoshi, you know, I, I would exp I would think, you know, the, the worst case that 100,000 Satoshi would buy you in the future is is made. You know, the worst case, I, I would say 100,000 Satoshi would buy you in the future is, is 20, 30 years from now is maybe six months worth of living expenses, um, you know, whatever that is, or six months worth of income at that time. I think the best case is. You know, a hundred, a hundred thousand satoshis uh, could 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 possibly buy you. You know, in twenty or thirty years, you know, maybe a new car, a new vehicle. Um, I think it's going to take a little bit more than that to buy you a house. Uh, however, I do think more like a million satoshis could could possibly end up buying you. You know, uh, putting shelter over your head, uh, or maybe even buying you buying you. Uh, you know, a, a, maybe a flat or or an apartment style uh, life. Um, I, I don't know if you're going to be able to get a mansion in a yacht for, for a million Satoshis over the next 20 or 30 years. Extrapolate it out further than that, possibly. Uh, myself, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the next maybe 25 years or, you know, maybe 26 years. If average man lives to 86 for me, I'm kind of thinking, what's this going to do for me over the next, you know, 25 to, to 30 years? Um, and I think whatever it does, it's, it's going to definitely secure my future. It, it's going to give me the, the economic uh, freedom that I need to make sure that I'm OK in the future. And, you know, at, when, as you get older, your your you be your wants and your needs change, Robin. And, you know, I, when I was younger, yeah, I wanted the fancy cars and the big houses. And that was really important to me. As I've gotten older, I've become more of a minimalist. Um, yeah, I've kept some of the things, you know, back in the heyday that that I spent money on uh, some of my favorite uh, possessions. But. As I've gotten older, I really feel that less is more. And, you know, I don't need big houses and fancy cars and all this stuff. I, I drive an old Toyota Corolla that, that <laughs> you know, it doesn't look so well, you know, but it's a great car, right? I look for value. Um, and uh, I actually feel safe in that. That's so, that's so weird because um, I actually feel safer, you know, driving that around th than I would now in California, driving around an expensive car, wearing a Rolex watch or anything like that, because, um, you know, I, I, I don't feel that's something that we should be doing any longer is, is flashing wealth like that. Um, so I think I think it's the, the future of, of this is, you know, if you got 100,000 Satoshi, a million Satoshi of Bitcoin in the future, I think it's going to turn into something that's worth a lot. And maybe you just kind of, you know, your mum's the word and you just kind of walk softly, you know, and, and, and be quiet about it. because. Um, I don't think things are going to be getting any better anytime soon. And I think there's going to be a hard, a hard knock on people's head that, that are, are asleep behind the wheel right now that aren't paying attention to what's going on with the inflation and, and everything. And a lot of people have social security or they have a pension coming in. And I find those people to be a lot of times the people that are hardest to orange pill because they've already got their, their retirement set. Oh, I've got my pension. I've got my social security coming in, you know, and, and, you know, they've got their little life going and they've got everything going. And that's good for them. I hope that stays going for them. But I think a lot of those people are going to wake up one morning and realize that that Social Security check doesn't buy much more than a loaf of bread uh, at one point. And um, 
the money printer is not going to stop. That's one thing I'm certain of is that they're not they're not going to default and they're going to keep that money printer going. So the inflation is going to continue to get worse, which means Satoshi's are going to continue to go up. I've got a I've got something neat that I got for my birthday when I turned 60. Margaret bought me a block clock. I don't know if you know what a block clock is, but they're really cool. And I don't have much of a need for stuff like that. And I was, you know, I was really even shameful for asking for it. You know, when I I said, she said, what can I get you when you turn 60? And I said, you know, the only thing that I really would kind of like is a block clock. And I'll tell you what, that was actually a good investment because what that did for me talking about Satoshi's, Robin, is that allows me to display the constant value of Satoshi. Um, versus dollar. So it breaks it down for me. So as I'm sitting there drinking my coffee in the morning, I can look at how many Satoshis I can buy for a dollar. And for me, that's become more valuable to me. I actually find myself smash buying Bitcoin based on that more than the price, because I see that Satoshis are getting are getting more expensive over time. When, when I got the clock back in January, you could get 2,500 Satoshis for a dollar. Now it's it even with all this volatility, it, you know, it's like 1,650 Satoshis per dollar right now. Um, so over time, it's, it, you know, these Satoshis are just going to get more expensive. So even if you don't have a lot of money to throw at this, just just start buying some Satoshis, whatever, whatever that can be. You know, I mean, I don't care if it's only ten dollars a week, get some Satoshis, uh, you know, and start saving those things um, because they're going to get they're definitely going to going to go up in value versus the, the fiat um, currency that I showed you. Personally, Robin, I think this stuff here is the true weapon of mass destruction in the world. I, I call this a weapon of mass destruction. What I've seen this stuff do, the social, moral, ethical, and cultural decay of our society is, is in my, I believe, caused by this dirty fiat currency. It is dirty. I mean, it, it, literally, I don't even like to touch it. There's nothing good about this, nothing at all. This is, from the start to the finish, this stuff is dirty. And we've got to get people realizing that this isn't good. I know a lot of people think the more of this they have, the better, but no, it, it really not. We don't want this stuff. We don't want to save in this stuff. We have a better instrument now. We have a better money, and this isn't really money anyway. It's a money substitute. You know, it's a fiat currency. So don't save your economic energy in this where it can be stolen and debased. Do you see the chance that uh, that fiat actually goes away completely in, in, for example, my lifetime, I'm 25, so let's say I'm living to 100, so the next 75 years? Absolutely. Yeah, I, you know, my predictions on, on this stuff, and, and, you know, I've done okay in life. I mean, I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not a financial genius or anything like that, but I certainly was able to to, to take an early retirement at 49 and it was self-made retirement where I don't get that pension. You know, I had to build my own retirement, which is, which I wouldn't change for the world because being self-employed gives you a lot of freedom. And I like, and I always liked that freedom. I could never go back to work for anybody uh, ever again. Even if I was out of money today, I wouldn't go back to work for somebody. I would, you know, I would, I would start up something. Uh, but um, to answer your question, I think the dollar's days are numbered. I think by, you know, maybe as close as by the end of this decade, uh, we lose the global reserve currency status as people are running for the exits from this stuff. And, and I think by 2035, we have a pretty much total collapse of the dollar in purchasing power. You know, we've only got a few percent left of it in spending power. And I think that it's slow. You know, we lose it slowly over time. And that was the miracle behind this instrument of theft. Um, and that's how they could hide it for so long, but they can't hide it anymore. So I think what's happening is it, it you know, it's the dollar's stable on the way down, and it's been that way since they took it off the gold standard. And I think what's going to happen at the end, it's going to fall off a cliff, and you're you're going to wake up to a massive debasement of the currency overnight. Now it could stick around, but I don't think people are are going to want to be using it anymore. Uh, you know, at that point, um, we've seen currencies hyperinflate before that are still around for some reason, right? Um, but at the end of the day, I think the dollar the the, the dollar has caused so much destruction in the world and people are trying to run run from it and protect themselves from it that it's um it's on its way out. I, I love I love uh Brent Johnson. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Brent Johnson and the dollar milkshake theory that he he released to the world in 2010. I, I love that. And I studied the dollar milkshake theory. Um, I, I think you only got one thing wrong. So, Brent, you're watching this. I think you just shouldn't have named it the dollar milkshake theory because milkshake's a good thing. You know, and I, I don't think this stuff should be in any way related to anything good. 
I mean, you couldn't even use it. A lot of people call it toilet paper, but let's be honest. You, you, you couldn't use it for that. You'd probably get some kind of an infection. This, this is just this is just dirty stuff through and through. And, and we, we really need to get away from it. We really need to wake up the world. If I had to name his theory, I, I would rename it to the dollar septic theory. Because to me, this represents more of something you'd find in a septic tank than in a milkshake. Um, and, and my thoughts on that is we see the BRICS nations right now. They're de-dollarizing. We see a lot of countries trying to protect themselves. It's not that they that not that they're necessarily I don't think they're necessarily like, let's destroy the dollar. I think it's just let's protect ourselves from this because the dollar, we've been exporting our inflation through what I like to call a septic tank system where the United States makes all this stuff in a giant bat, vat, vat, which I call a septic tank. And then we, we, we through leech lines, we export it to other countries like the dollar milkshake theory suggests. And we're able to continually export our inflation while other countries are tired of it. And they're plugging up those leech lines, Robin. And so what's happening in America now is we're seeing we're seeing the backup of that septic system backing up into our own country. We can't hide it anymore. And like I said, we're seeing the social, moral, ethical, and cultural decay of a great country. We're, look around. You're seeing the stench of this stuff backing up into our own country. And, and it, it's just a weapon of mass destruction that, that needs to stop. It's not going to be pretty when it does. A lot of people are going to get hurt that aren't prepared. But the only way to fix this is, is this has, stuff has to go away. We have to use something better. And I think Bitcoin is that tool. And I think it is going to be globally adopted. And I think that people are going to use it. I think countries are going to wake up like Russia and realize that Bitcoin doesn't have to be an enemy. These countries don't have to look at it as an enemy. It'll work for them. It'll work for countries just as well as it works for you and I. Uh, they'll realize that, oh, my gosh, I don't have to trust another nation. I can use this technology for, you know, for tr to trade goods and services all around the world. And nobody can manipulate this stuff. And it's secure. So I think when countries wake up, and I think they're starting to wake up. The the price of Bitcoin is going to have to go through the roof, because if you start doing any kind of global trade in this the, and because it's a finite supply, the price has to go into the millions uh, of dollars per Bitcoin. And, that, and that's going to be exciting, you know. Uh, but I think what's more exciting than the price going up is just the fact that we have something that can help undo the damage that that the fiat currencies of the world have done to humanity. It's going to take some time, even with good sound money like Bitcoin, to undo this damage, Robin, because there's a lot of damage that this is this that this is done. I mean, this is going to take this is going to take decades, um, you know, to, to fix this kind of damage uh, that, that this has caused. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the BitBox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code ROBIN at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash ROBIN to get your BitBox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing coin vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. Uh, very true. I think <laughs> I think the damage is, is, is really bad and, and I think we will slowly recover only from that. I'm really interested in, uh, you said like you, you foresee like a 2035 around the total collapse. It, it can, of course, as you said, like it can stick around a long time. Um, but let's zoom in in that uh, period where the dollar actually collapses. Um, wh what do you think will Bitcoin do then? Like, do you think that Bitcoin will then already be the obvious alternative or will people search for everything then? As right now, I mean, for example, in Turkey, we can see it a little bit. Of course, there are a lot of people buying Bitcoin, but there are also a lot of people buying ETFs, buying gold, buying everything else uh, in order to, to save themselves. How, how much do you think uh, will, will Bitcoin be once the world reserve currency as the dollar is 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 collapsing right now now the reason before i answer that question the reason i believe that we will see the end by around 2035 is if you do the math um and you extrapolate out just the bond market alone eventually the bond market's going to start breaking down it is just there just isn't going to be enough energy there isn't going to be enough hands out there working to pay the enormous debt and buy the bonds that they need to sell to keep this Ponzi scheme going. And and so I think that the end of the dollar is a breakdown of the bond market. That's my best guess on this, because if we can't sell the bonds to pay the debt or to pay the interest payments, if there just isn't enough economic energy out there to buy these bonds, it's, it's the end of the dollar. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, to, to, to answer your question, um, I think that um, that going forward, uh, I'm losing my train of thought here. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, my mind's all over the place. R run the question, Bobby, one more time, Robin. I do apologize on that. Uh, um, no, no, no worries, no worries. Like I, I have this all the time where I'm like, oh uh, shit, I'm yeah. rambling, I'm rambling. Where, where did I want to ramble about? Yeah, um, I was, uh, I was asking about when we actually collapse the dollar where, what will bitcoin be then like how obvious will bitcoin be as a choice for people uh when when we are collapsing a dollar and you explained like uh, how how right. why, right. why you think it is so so i think i think what it'll be it'll be likely um there'll be enough adoption of bitcoin by then to where it'll be likely the place that people have immediately to run to so even people that are maybe holding a little bit of bitcoin when they when they wake up and they see that their dollar lost 40% of its value overnight, when we have that final leg down um, and we see the hyperinflationary events start, starting to take place, some might argue it's already happening, right? Look at ice cream. Uh, it, it, so so if, we, if we look at that, I think it's going to be, an, there'll be a lot of people having accounts already set up. So I think it'll be one of the more obvious places to exit, to run for the exit is the Bitcoin exit. I think that's likely to happen. Um, and I think that's when we'll see some of those Omega candles and God candles. And we're probably going to see some of that before then as well. Um, but I think to, that there's also some other areas, not just Bitcoin, although what I like about Bitcoin, of course, there's always gold. There's always precious metals. Um, however, I think that Bitcoin is far superior than that. Uh, and then there's there, there's always things like stocks. However, I do think that going forward that the stock market will eventually get some of its value sucked out of it because we won't need to go there. We won't need to gamble so much with our money. When our money itself has a store of value built into it, you don't have to go outside looking and gamble with your money buying stocks and trying to pick stocks to, to gamble that in the future. So I think that eventually the stock market is going to get vacuumed into a large portion of it is going to get vacuumed in, into Bitcoin as well. Uh, so yeah, I think that Bitcoin will be primed in a good position by 2035 to be the main exit for the fiat currencies of the world. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the money is going to flow. Really interesting. I mean, talked before uh, about this hundred thousand satoshis. Um, I get that a lot from uh, beginners. Like, oh, how many how many Bitcoin should I accumulate? How many satoshis should I accumulate? Do you also get that question? And uh, do you have an, an answer for that, or a, a way to think of like, oh yeah, like th that's like uh, if you live in that country, you want to have that lifestyle, you should at least 
try to get to that uh, amount of satoshis if, if you have the means obviously uh the, the more the better usually but <laughs> uh, do you have some framework around that well i don't too much get into that discussion but what i do tell people is get off zero you know i i think that's the most important part um you know i don't know if you ever watch this maybe a little off topic here but sometimes i feel like um i feel like dave you, you may not know who this actor was the late actor david carradine but we had a great tv show out here uh called kung fu and he, he used to walk around the desert he walked from town to town with his flute and he was a peaceful guy always always talking to somebody and always trying to do kind things for people but but always fighting the war at the same time he was always fighting battles uh, physically with people that didn't understand him and sometimes i feel the same way as him I'm, i live in the desert you know uh, and i and i I'm, I'm walking around the streets of you know, if you want to find me, just come down here to Palm Springs, look for the guy walking around the downtown with a, with a Bitcoin shirt on. You know, I feel like sometimes I'm him. I'm walking around the desert. I'm evangelizing this technology to anybody that will listen. And sometimes, you know, that can lead to kind of some some heated debate, you know, which I try to stay out of where once I see somebody is going negative on me and, and creating creating an area I don't want to go down, I, I, I try to walk away. But I. I have some people out here that I walk by that are sitting out in coffee shops and they, they know who I am. And, you know, sometimes they'll say Bitcoin. And, and I notice that they they acknowledge me when the price is going up. Right. Uh, you know, when the price is going down, they, 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 they pretty much don't don't acknowledge me too much. But when it's hitting all new all time highs, they'll say something like they'll yell out Bitcoin and I'll say, get off zero. You know, and then if they want to talk, if they ask some questions, I stop and I talk to them and, and I give them some information. Um, so I'm always evangelizing this. I'm willing to talk to anybody out here, uh, in the, you know, to, to spread the good word. And, uh, I often feel like that TV character out here, you know, walking around the desert, just, uh, you know, from area to area, from, from store owner to shop owner, you know, just, just having a good time with it. I try to, I try to have a good time with it. It makes me really happy to talk Bitcoin and I'm willing to talk with anybody about it. So, um, and by the way, uh, Robin, if, if, um, if there are any people out here in the desert that want to that want to hook up, uh, I, I joined a meetup group out here uh, on the meetup app and uh, we have a um, uh, Palm Springs Bitcoin. So you can find me there on Palm Springs Bitcoin. Uh, you can join our group. We've got uh, over 300 people in the group right now. And uh, we'll probably be starting next month uh, trying to put on a monthly meeting out here in the desert. So I encourage anybody that lives close by or wants to communicate, uh, you know, check out the group. It's free, free to join. Uh, it's interesting. I, it's like, uh, it's it's really important, I feel like, to meet other Bitcoiners in real life. Like that's something uh, we should all strive for as as much as, as, as possible and, and find the local groups, go to the conferences if possible, go to like small conferences in your area, um, meet up groups. There's Orange Pill app, there are a lot of different different ways how you can meet uh, bitcoiners uh and uh, it's it's great when when uh, when i see people actually gathering uh, around bitcoin and actually discussing it in real life i think that's those those connections are so valuable in the future uh that we meet make those now uh that it will be great when you look back in like 20 years not only like oh you got bitcoin but you also got that bitcoiner uh, friend network where you like have so many great people in one line. I think, I think it could be very valuable even uh, beyond your stack, your stacking the, the friends is, is, is something amazing. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up and I can see it in your face when you're smiling, you know, Bitcoin just seems to make things better and it is enriched for anybody out there who's sitting on the fence, maybe that doesn't own any Bitcoin that maybe is watching this for the first time. Let me tell you something. This for my own personal experience, this has enriched my life, Robin. Bitcoin has enriched my life immensely. I I walk around with a Bitcoin shirt on almost every single day, wherever I go. Um, I've got a closet full of them. And, uh, you know, I, I've met, I have a couple good friends that I've met out here in the desert because of this shirt, which is amazing, you know, because of wearing Bitcoin shirts, um, which has enriched my life. I mean, these are people that um, I do stuff with, I go places with. We, 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 we don't just talk Bitcoin, but it, it's, it's enriched my life. I mean, friends are important. And when you get on the same wavelength with somebody who's a Bitcoiner, you're sharing the same passion. And it's just a beautiful thing. I mean, one guy I met 
a good friend of mine, Don, I met him at, at a, a vintage market out here in Palm Springs. I was walking around. He heard me evangelizing to, a, to, a, to an elderly gentleman who asked about it, and he stopped, you know, and he started talking to me about it. I heard you talking about Bitcoin, and next thing I know, we're exchanging numbers. We're talking. Now he's – I spend hours every week talking to him on the phone. We go places. We go to car shows and whatnot together. Um, you know, sometimes we get out uh, as a couple together and go out to have dinner. So talk about enriching your life. Um, it has really enriched my life, and, and it's just been one of the side effects of this that I didn't expect when I got into it. But it's just beautiful, Robin. And I could see you have that same that same glow in your face as as, as I do when it comes to talking about Bitcoin. It's it's uh, give it a chance out there. Now, in nineteen in in uh, in uh, in two thousand seventeen, I, I I bought my first you know I bought my first Bitcoin. I didn't know what it was. Um, unfortunately, I. I procrastinated before I, I, I bought it by six months. I, I watched a documentary by the late um, Morgan Spurlock. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's the guy who created the Super Size Me uh, documentary about McDonald's. And he had created a documentary. I seen it on Netflix and I watched it. Unfortunately, his, his you know, his documentary on Bitcoin didn't grab me. Um, it, 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 it just didn't grab my attention. Now, his Super Size Me documentary was great about the, the McDonald's and, and the fast food industry. Uh, but for some reason, it didn't grab me. And, and, and this is a little bit about my journey about getting into Bitcoin. Uh, and, and so uh, we watched it together, Margaret and I, and we just kind of shrugged it off and didn't think much about it. Bitcoin was about $660 per coin at the time. About six months later, Margaret asked me to go on to Overstock.com and buy her a pair of sunglasses and so I went on there and um, when I was checking out, it offered me to pay in Bitcoin and it was like getting struck by a lightning bolt. I, I literally felt like I was moving in slow motion. I, I couldn't get I couldn't get to Google fast enough to, to, to Google the price of Bitcoin at that time. And it was it was like twenty four hundred dollars. And I thought to myself, what is this? You know, what in the world is this? Uh, and so I said, you know what, I'm going to punish myself right now. I'm going to blindly just buy this, not knowing what it is. And and so I, I remember I, I set up an account and I was pushing the button to buy my first Bitcoin at $2,400. And I thought to myself, I deserve to lose this. If I lose this, I lose this. And I deserved to go to the school of hard knocks and, and lose this. So I pushed the button thinking this is gone forever and I'm going to lose this. Right. And that was the beginning of my journey. I then uh, started learning about it once I had some skin in the game. And that's what I, I want people to understand out there. If you want to learn about Bitcoin, get some skin in the game and just start learning about it. And I encourage everybody that I speak with, don't just listen to me. Go out and learn about it. Start watching some YouTube videos. Learn about it. And um, I also refer your videos out to people uh, and, and a lot of the, the big the big players out there as well. And I say, just learn about it. There's a lot of good information out there. You know, read the Bitcoin white paper, uh, put a little skin in the game and just watch this thing. Uh, and for those that I've told that to and I told a lot of people back in 2018, I really didn't start evangelizing until 2018 because I wanted to make sure that I knew as much as I could learn about this technology. I went down the rabbit hole very quickly. I got more like sucked down the rabbit hole and I'm at the bottom now, Rob, and there's no, there's no getting out. Even if I had a ladder, I just knocked the ladder down. I don't want out. I'm, I'm in this thing for life. Um, I see this and I understand this technology. And even if you don't know, understand this technology uh, completely, you don't have to, I think of it like the TV, right? We don't understand what all the capacitors, resistors and diodes do in a television set. We just have the remote control and we know how to work that. Well, your cell phone now is your remote control. So you don't need to you don't need to understand SHA-256 encryption and all and, and, you know, all this technical stuff with Bitcoin mining. You just got to understand the basics um, and you just got to get some. Even if you didn't understand anything about it, if you just bought some and didn't do anything with it, it's still going to work for you. You don't have to understand it to make it work for you, which is really cool. So um, I encourage anybody out there to keep uh, learning about it. I'm still learning today after seven, seven years in the space. I learn stuff almost every day. Uh, and I've learned a lot from your podcast as well. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, but I don't know if you can ever learn everything. If, if Michael Saylor is still learning, I mean, you know, we've got a lot to learn. What, what are some, uh, as you are 
kind of already an OG with like 2017 you're in. Uh, that's like, yeah, seven years now. It's really long, actually. Um, it's fascinating how, how far we have already come in, in Bitcoin. What are some, some lessons that you have learned uh, uh, about Bitcoin that are must knows like if you're a bitcoiner you you really should know uh those right. lessons what, what can you can yeah. you share about bitcoin lessons maybe even like about life lessons sure i mean you know um i've made some mistakes uh, you know i'm human right and you know there were some pretty good con men in the space <laughs> you know we had to go through a pretty hardcore bear market um and uh you know i, I made some mistakes what you know one thing i'd say is that bitcoin Bitcoin doesn't need yield. You don't need to earn yield on your Bitcoin. Bitcoin's got built in yield, um, which which is really amazing, and and it shows it shows the importance that of self custody, right? I, I'm I'm a big fan of self custody. Um, I'm also a big fan of not putting all your eggs in one basket. And and fortunately, even though I I I walked through a minefield, I I, I think in the last um in the last bear market where we had a lot of companies imploding. Um, I dodged a few bullets. Yeah, I got hit by one. Um, I, I got hit by the Celsius bullet. You know, <laughs> I got hit right in the gut with that one. But I dodged a couple other bullets. You know, one, uh, I got a, I got grazed in the shoulder, and one one flew by my head. So at, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, don't don't sit there and try to earn. In my opinion, don't try to earn yield on your Bitcoin. There's a lot of exchanges trying to pay you a little bit of yield by letting them hold your Bitcoin. The best thing is self custody. Um, just put that stuff away. And, and I still, even with self-custody, I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket, Robin. I, I don't like, uh, and I think your previous guest, um, Mark Hanna, was also saying the same thing, and I agreed with him, is, you know, don't just have all your eggs in one 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 place, right, one basket. That's just bad, and that saved me through the last bear market, is when all these all these all this fraud was being flushed out of the system and all these companies were folding and freezing people's money and people were losing their money. Fortunately, uh, I had enough diversification that, yeah, I took a bullet, but I'm OK, you know, and I learned I learned a valuable lesson. You know, um, Bitcoin was set up for one simple reason. Don't trust verify. Right. So we don't need to trust with Bitcoin. Just self custody it as much as you can. I know it's not always possible to self custody every single thing, uh, but you know um, I do I do dollar cost average, and then when I get enough, like your previous guest said, I, then I send it off to cold storage. I don't you know every time I buy Bitcoin, I don't send it off, but I, when I accumulate a certain amount, then I send it off to cold storage, and that's where it stays. Um, so I think those are valuable lessons: is is don't trust because this was set up not to trust. We don't have to trust anymore. Uh, we don't have to trust companies. We don't have to trust bad actors in the space or anybody in the space. We can just buy and self custody this, um, and and that's your tr that's that's your security in this space, Robin. Mm. That's that's beautiful. I, I I love that a lot. Um, and I think as the previous guest and and you also like retired and and have Bitcoin, it, it shows like the the power that you are like trusting uh, in your retirement. Uh, Bitcoin. It's, it's, I, I like it a lot uh, how you look at Bitcoin and how, how other guests look at Bitcoin. Um, as, and there's like one more question to, to you as a telecommunication expert or like someone that worked a long time in, in that field. Um, do you see outside of, of money uh, use cases in, in Bitcoin as Bitcoin also has the, the possibilities to send like information and other things on there, even like with social media just sapping each other. I mean, that's use case of money, but it's, it's, it's money that's so easily uh, transferable and you can make so such tiny units of that that you can send like a few cents just to the friend uh, on and maybe one like is not one like but it's it's one cent in a satoshi or like just one satoshi i literally like i, I have for example found my podcast is on fountain and there are people uh streaming nine sats uh, uh to to me <laughs> while they're listening and it's it's like amazing because i was like wow it's like really like uh, they, they get value from the podcast and then they also give me value with Satoshi's directly. Um, do, do you foresee any further use cases uh, for Bitcoin? Well, I think I think one thing that's going to probably happen, you know, over the next uh, 10 to 15 years is, you know, A, I think 
this may be a little off track, but I think Bitcoin's are, Bitcoin's going to start being priced more in Satoshis. <laughs> People are going to start saying how many Satoshis instead of how many Bitcoin, because let's just face it, everybody can't own a Bitcoin. So uh, it's just like gold went from, you know, a bar to, to ounces, right? And then and, and into grams and, and, and smaller units. I think Bitcoin's going to continue to be priced in smaller units. I even think Satoshis one day are going to be through, the, through you know, layer twos like the, like the Lightning Network are going to be broken down into microsats, if you want to name it something, right? Where, you know, they're going to be able to break a Satoshi down. Now, that doesn't create any, you know, some people are, well, that's just going to create, in, like, uh, what's his name? The, the uh, Peter Schiff, Peter Schiff the, the gold bug. Um, you know, he thinks, oh, well, you could just divide a Satoshi, you know, infinitely and that create, well, yeah, but it doesn't create more Bitcoin. You know, you can divide a Satoshi, but it, it doesn't create more Bitcoin at the end of the day, just like you can shave gold down into, into dust. It doesn't create, you know, you shave an ounce of gold down into dust, it doesn't create more. But at the end of the day, I think that, um, you know, are there going to be layer twos built on top of the Bitcoin blockchain? I think that that's what you were kind of asking. Are we going to have other use cases? And I think there, there are going to be other use cases for the, for the Bitcoin um, blockchain. I don't think it's going to be the, the, go, the go all for everything. I, I just don't think that's possible. But, and, and I'm not a, you know, I'm not a Bitcoin maxi. I, I do invest in some, some altcoins as well. I do think that there are some altcoins that, that are going to have use cases. And blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies, I think, are here to stay. And, and Bitcoin isn't going to be the only one. I think you're pretty naive if you actually think that as a, as, a, as a Bitcoin maxi. Now, you have a right to invest in whatever you want. If you just want to hold Bitcoin, you can't go wrong with that. Um, what I try to do is I try to leverage up a little bit sometimes and earn, get a faster horse for a certain period of time and then, you know, convert that into more Bitcoin. So my, my end game is Bitcoin, but I, but I don't think it's the only blockchain. And I think that there are going to be a lot of layer twos that get built on Bitcoin that can do things that we can't, we can't even imagine. Just like in telecommunications, we had no idea that we were going to be having this conversation when phones were first invented. I mean, the, the first phones, uh, you know, Robin, I mean, they, they were they were big and clunky. The Motorola brick phones were three thousand dollars and you could store 10 numbers. They were analog. You know, you got a lot of static and you couldn't do anything with it to have this conversation all these years later. This is the same type of adoption we're going to see on the Bitcoin blockchain. It, it's anybody's guess where this is going to go, because even being in the telecommunications business and getting in early, there was no way in the world I could have guessed where it was going to go and how this was going to was going to wind up. Now, we had people in the industry guessing where it was going to go, and they were putting money there. Unfortunately, they were buying infrastructure, and a lot of them lost their money because they guessed wrong. With Bitcoin, we don't have to guess wrong. We can just put into Bitcoin, and I think that that alone is going to be good enough. We don't have to guess and, and pick some alternative coins. That's all gamble and speculation, in my opinion. But I do believe that there are other projects out there that are, that are going to be here uh, in the long run. Um, and I think we will see a lot of stuff built on the on the Bitcoin blockchains. I, I, I don't know what that looks like. Um, you know, I don't think we're going to have communications so much built on it where we're going to be having, you know, uh, video conference and stuff on it. I just don't think that kind of stuff is practical to build on a, on a blockchain like that. I think I hope that it stays as the as the granite in the foundation of money for its main purpose. Um, and I hope that we don't. We don't clog up the blockchain as we've seen in the past. Sometimes we get these people trying to, to build on it and they clog up the blockchain a little bit. So I'm hoping that, that all that building is more done on layer twos um, and, and we, can, we can leave the main blockchain to do what it's supposed to do. I don't think it needs to be fixed at all. I think it's perfect the way that it is. I also think so like the, 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 the money part of Bitcoin is the most important one. If we have a, a, a amazing store of value in Bitcoin, uh, that's the most valuable thing in, in the world. Like nothing comes even close to that. Like the problem, like a solution is always like, like can only be as valuable as the problem is. Uh, and the problem of where do I store my money? Like that's the biggest problem of the all. And, and there's only Bitcoin or not like not only, but the, the best horse in the race is, is bitcoin for me uh there are other horses like you, you can bet on on anything uh but but for me it's like wow that's like the that, that's the solution for me to where where do i uh store my financial energy in and it's 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 so great to see that and uh in the end of the day uh, i was today on, on a guest uh uh podcast and and, and he asked me oh do, do you see 
is, is Bitcoin here to stay? Is there any possibility that Bitcoin might go away? And I'm like, yeah, Bitcoin could go away. I don't see the possibility. Like there's a very, very small chance that Bitcoin goes away, but it's not impossible. Uh, but one thing that doesn't go away is the idea of Bitcoin, the idea of sound money, the idea of digital scarcity that's now planted in all our heads and it will never go away. Um, I, I truly think that Bitcoin will be that uh, and, and, and will deliver that. But maybe I'm wrong. Like well, <laughs> I can be wrong. Uh, but the idea is, is, is in all our heads. You know, that leads me to a thought that I'd like to share uh, with the audience here. Um, you, you had mentioned back in the beginning of this something about inflation and why people don't quite get it sometimes. Well, I, one thing that Bitcoin does for everybody that starts learning about it, it gives them something that they, they didn't learn in school. It, it gives them a financial education. And, you know, when you start measuring real money versus this dirty fiat, this money substitute, when you start measuring that and you start seeing the difference, you learn real quick about what inflation is and you get a financial education real quick. What, what I want to tell people, and, I, and again, I think what's slowing uh, things down even just a little bit is most people in the United States do not have a financial education. And I was with my accountant the other day <laughs> and I was trying, you know, I have to talk crypto to her now because it's, it's in my taxes. And I learned real quickly that my accountant does not have a financial education. And that really shocked me. <laughs> I was, I was, I couldn't believe it when I was talking to her and I was actually educating her and I thought, what's wrong with this picture here? She doesn't have a clue of what I'm talking about. Um, you know, and, and I was shocked. But one thing I like to do is I like to tell people a little bit um, about money because most people don't know what money is. And that's the biggest problem we have. They think money is, and I hate to show this thing again, but they think money is this, you know, green pieces of paper with dead president's head on it. I mean, like George Washington, if he was alive today, do you really think he would endorse knowing what's going on, his picture on this piece of paper? He'd probably sue to get his, his picture taken off of this because this doesn't represent his core values back then. And I think that that alone is fraud. Putting his picture on here is fraud. Um, but this thing is just littered with fraud. And, and so what I, what I try to do with people is, is when I talk to them a little bit about Bitcoin and I evangelize, I try to tell them about um, what money is. And I've come up with an, my own uh, ac acronym, I guess, for money. Uh, so an easy way for people to understand money. And I tell them, look, if you can, if you can remember the word tie, T-I-E, like a necktie, just tie, you can kind of remember what money is. And I said, you know, the T stands for technology. This, people don't think of this as technology, but this is technology. It's also information, that's the I, and it's also energy. So what our government has done is they become a master at using this technology to blur the information to steal your energy, if that makes any sense. So they use the information, the technology, to blur the information to steal your energy. Because we know the information that they give us about inflation is blurred. We know everything that they do with this Currency is blurred. We can't see. It's opaque. We, we, it's, it's, it's a double entry accounting system, right? You earn this money, Robin. You put it in the bank. You can't see what the bank does with it. So you can't see there. With Bitcoin, it's a triple entry accounting system, the world's first triple entry accounting system, where you can actually see every step of where that goes. If I have it and I send it to you, you can see it from point A to point B. There's no hiding it. It's a like Michael Saylor said, and I won't take credit for this, but I love it. He said, Bitcoin is a closed loop energy system with no leaks. Every single Satoshi that was ever created is accounted for. Every single one of these that has ever been created, we don't even know how much of this stuff is in circulation, has not been accounted for. So uh, it's, it's, really, it's really fascinating that people, that, that people still want to save their energy in this when there's something like Bitcoin that's better. I don't think anybody that knows about Bitcoin and understands it now wants to save their their energy in this because when you work like you're doing today, or everybody's working. We're working to store our energy to spend it later. That's that's the that's the e part of tie, right? 
it, we're working hard to put this away to store it later. And your time is your energy. So imagine you, you make a deal to work for this for $16 an hour. And you made that deal with somebody. You're okay with that deal. But what you're not okay with is somebody coming along when you're sleeping at night and scraping a little bit off the top, stealing a little bit of that economic energy that you work so hard for. That's what Bitcoin fixes, Robin. And that's why we need it. And that's why it's going to take over. I'm, I couldn't be more certain and more positive about anything than I am about Bitcoin. It, it, for me, it's a no brainer once you understand the power of Bitcoin. Wow. I, I love that a lot. Um, and, and you bring up uh, really great points and really great pictures in, in the head of, of how to explain Bitcoin. And, and I can see you, you probably have like hundreds of, of in-person <laughs> orange peelings. I don't know how I many you, you did, but uh, yeah. I feel it's, it's definitely not uh, like your, your first ones. Um, really cool. There are so many uh, uh, important topics uh, to discuss, but maybe we can do a second round uh, because we're already over one hour. Um, sure. I have the two uh, end routine questions. Uh, the sure. first question is always the same for every guest. Um, what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about? Yeah, you know, and that is learn from my mistakes in life because I love to learn from wisdom, right? So what mistakes did I make in life? I got materialistic at a young age. I made a lot of money. And instead of investing it, and I did do investing and I did do some things by default. But the truth is, Robin, until I retired and until I until I turned 50, I didn't have a financial education. And I'm not embarrassed to admit that I, I just was able to to work and retire because I did some basic things right. Like, you know, buy a house, for instance. Right. Save some money, buy some stocks, just some basic stuff. Right. That that I didn't know was actually protecting me so much from from the devaluation of the dollar at the time, I didn't even think so much about inflation. It wasn't until I got into my 50s, Robin, that I started getting a financial education and learning about how to protect my future because I seen that I seen things changing. And I got worried when I when I turned 50 that maybe I don't have enough. Maybe my retirement isn't going to last. Right. And at that time, I also became a minimalist and and started realizing that, wow, you know, I don't need all this stuff. And I started downsizing. Um, you know, and what I like about Bitcoin is it actually encourages sa it encourages savings, Robin, which is amazing because this stuff seems to encourage the opposite. It, it seems to encourage people to want to go out and spend, right? Where Bitcoin, once you realize you where you can put that energy instead of going out and buying, you know, the the, the next Xbox. Once you realize where you can put that energy, and you realize that that Xbox is going to get cheaper over time, it actually encourages you to save. And 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 it for me, it's it's been a blessing. So. Learn from other people's mistakes out there, um, not just mine, but talk to people. Learn. You see people that have made mistakes financially. You see people that are living over their head, people trying to keep up with the Joneses. Oh, my gosh, stop that nonsense. Just stop it. it, it, it it's just a waste. The, you know, impressing somebody at a red light, Robin, in a fancy car for 10 seconds that I don't know has got to be the biggest waste of money in the world. Um and you might be surprised when you start when you start learning that less is more, how good you feel. You know, pe people joke about my car that I drive, Robin, but I'll tell you what, I can pull into any gas station and nobody asks me for money. It's really it's really a blessing. Yeah, it's a, it's interesting. Yeah, uh, we, again, Bitcoin definitely made me also more minimalistic. I I talked about I think uh, on the podcast already once uh, about that. Um, I last year. Uh, I bought myself the newest iPhone uh, because like, I was like, ah, I need it. I need it. I need it. I want it. I want it. I, I do so much on it. And then uh, a few months ago, I was like reflecting on it. Like, I, why do I need it? Like, do, do I really need it? Like, what do I do on the phone? And I was like, okay, I, I write tweets on the phone. I reply to YouTube comments on the phone. I the uh, phone with other people. I write WhatsApp messages. Um, I don't do really anything else like i'm not a big picture taker or video taker with the phone for the podcast i have a camera um so why do why do i need a phone and i uh, downgraded from a new iphone iphone was it 14 pro max to uh, a, a older one like an 11 yeah it's an i think an 11 one uh because i was like ah i don't need that and honestly I'm even thinking of downgrading this again, like, because it's, it, it still feels like an overkill. It still feels like, 
what, what, what do I need it for? It, it, it has an amazing display. It's really fast. It has all those amazing apps on there and I never use them. <laughs> like I, the, yeah. the, 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 the things that I use my phone for is like almost nothing. I, I use, I'm, I'm a computer guy. I sit in, in front of my computer a lot. Uh, and the only thing is like, I want a good battery life. That's the only thing because, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm on a conference and I want to be connected. So I need like a whole day, uh, of battery, uh, and, and for tweets and stuff like that. So that's something that was always, uh, great, but the phone has enough battery. So, uh, it's a small example. A uh, very small example, uh, but uh, it, I think it shows the power of Bitcoin and being more minimalistic, being more uh, mindful with what do you spend your money on? Like, do you really need uh, the, the biggest phone and the biggest car, the, 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 a, a mansion with like seven bedrooms, like when, when there's nobody visiting you anyways? So there's like a, a lot of questions that you, you have to ask yourself and, and being mindful with, with money. And this, this does Bitcoin with you. And uh, it's great that you brought that point up because I think it's, a, it's an amazing point uh, that, that Bitcoin actually uh, does for you. Right. Perfect. And congratulations, congratulations, Robin. I think you're going to be a very, a very, a very wealthy person in life. Not, not just monetarily speaking, but it sounds like you're, you're on the right path to, to riches, which is, which is measured more than just, just in, in, in dollars or, or money. You know, being happy, healthy, family. Um, my biggest priority uh, is my health. You know, because I can't buy my health. Um, so, you know, focus on your health. Um, you know, that, that's one of the, the biggest. Uh, gifts i can i can spread out there you can't buy your health you know you can't buy time you can't buy your health um so try not to sell your time because you can't buy it that, that's an amazing learning because um i think the the most important things in life we should always do in the morning like the the as soon as you stand up you should do your number one priority task at least for me because i'm a morning person if you're a uh, night person that might be uh, shifted around on the head. Uh, so the first thing, uh, when I stand up, I do some workout. For example, today I stood up at like 5.30 at 6. I was uh, running away and I had like a little bit over 6 kilometers. I don't know what this is in miles, uh, uh, but it was feeling really great. It was like 45 minutes uh, what I was running. And it is just a, a nice thing. You come home, you go for a shower. Uh -huh. uh, and sure. then the second most important thing is editing my podcast. <laughs> Find, finding new thumbnails, finding new titles. <laughs> yeah, in the mor in the mornings, I often go um, out, start my morning, and and I walk, and I evangelize. I mean, it makes me happy. I'm, it, it, you know, I'm just out there walking, and and I I'm flashing my my Superman cape, you know, <laughs> my 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 Bitcoin shirts, and I'm just I'm just I'm ready for somebody to say something, and I'm ready to start talking about it to anybody who listens, and. Sometimes nobody says anything. Sometimes I don't talk about it, but I'm out there walking and I'm having fun and I feel like I'm helping people and I'm, and I'm really waking people up and making the world a better place. I know I've changed some lives. And to me that, you know, that's, that's a, that's a great gift. I don't, I'm not out here doing this to make any money off of a podcast or I'm not on social media and that's okay. If, if people are making their living doing that, I can certainly appreciate that. For me, I'm not out there on the streets, beating the streets. I'm retired already. So I've done what I needed to do in life get to where I am. You know, I'm just here trying to protect my retirement and trying to help people protect theirs as well. So I think we're on the same mission, Robin. Congratulations. Uh, really cool. I appreciate that a lot uh, going around and, and actively trying to the orange build the world. I think that's 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 what we really need. Uh, and, and it's really cool that, that you're doing it, the grassroots movement, bottom up. And uh, I, I love it a lot. Perfect. Then let's come to the end routine uh, of our podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, it feels like that sentence comes fast and faster <laughs> over my <laughs> lips <laughs> the more I say it. Uh, but the question for you is, what does freedom really mean to you? Yeah. Uh, you know, as you get older, you think more and more about it. Like your last, again, Mark uh, uh, Hanna, they were talking about his freedom. He actually left the country. Um, yeah, freedom, freedom to me means everything. And I, and I see our, as our, as our dollars being debased, Robin, what I've seen in my 60 years on the planet here in the United States, I'm watching it debase everything. It's debasing our constitution as well. So the more money they're printing, the, you know, it, in my opinion, the debasement of our currency in fiat currency, the dollar, the debasement of that, it, 
is not compatible with the Constitution. So as they're debasing our currency, they have to rip apart our freedom in our Constitution that we used to have that protected us. The things that are going on in America now scare me. The, the civil asset forfeitures that are going on out here in our country, I don't know if you have it where you're at, but you know any American needs to look up civil asset forfeiture um, and learn that their freedoms, you know, it'll scare you. Our freedoms are being are being just robbed from us. So don't give up your freedom. Fight for it. You know, because once we give it up, once you give up freedom, it's really hard to get it back. So freedom to me means everything. I mean, I've it's at a point now where um, I'm like your last guest. I'm thinking I'm considering a second passport. Margaret already has a second passport and we spend a lot of time in Europe. Usually the summers we go we go to Europe. And so um, we've already got another flat over there that, that's, you know, that's, that, that, that's rented out. But I'm thinking about getting something else to maintain my freedom because I'm not feeling like I have a lot of freedom here anymore in the United States. I see what's happening and it's only going to get worse as as this corruption. It's it's kind of like the whole system is decaying. It's collapsing in on itself. Rob, we see all this political uh, divide. We are so divided as a nation now. It's ridiculous. I mean, I even wouldn't want to put a bumper sticker on my car now for fear that somebody would vandalize my car because I'm supporting this candidate or that candidate. And so the debasement of the currency is also debasing our political uh, class as well. It, it, the whole thing is eating itself. It's, it's just devouring itself. And along with that comes our freedom. Uh, we lose our freedom. You know, we're done. Bit, book, Bitcoin can, can, can give you a lot of that freedom back. Having a second passport can give you a lot of freedom back. So um, freedom means means everything to me. And I think that people should have a plan B to maintain that freedom. Uh, it, 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 it's what makes freedom is my hope for the future. I want to be free as I get older into my retirement. I don't want to be sitting here protecting myself from tyranny, from from money printers. Uh, I hope that that answers your question, Robin. Perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I think it was an, an amazing one. Um, before I let you go, where can people find you, ask you questions uh, and get in touch with you? Just come down to Palm Springs, walk around and look for the guy on the street wearing the Bitcoin shirt. I'll be happy to talk to you. Uh, actually, actually, a great. Uh, uh, that's not a joke. Actually, there's uh, you'd be amazed. My, <laughs> my, my son was down here a month ago walking around with his wife and said, I wouldn't be surprised if I don't see my dad down here. And who does he run into five minutes later? <laughs> I'm walking down the street with my Bitcoin shirt on. We were laughing, had a good time about it. Um, but uh, so, yeah, if you don't want to walk around Palm Springs uh, looking for me, uh, you know, I, I'm not uh, I'm, I, I'm I'm pretty easy to find on that uh, meetup group. You know, I'm under Jim C on there. And if you go to meetup and, and you and you look at the group, you can you can join the the the, the group if you want or, or reach out to me, on, you know, on a, on a message there, um, you know, and I can also send you the, the link to that if you want, Robin. So if you want to post it on your video, you can just post a link and they click on it. it'll take them right to the group. Perfect. Yeah, let's 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 post a, uh, a group. Uh, I don't know how many from Palm Springs <laughs> in, in in the audience, but I know a lot of yeah. uh, Americans uh, are in the audience. So so maybe yeah. Well, uh, there, really we cool. have we have we have over like three hundred members, and and uh, you know we have some people that don't live in Palm Springs that you know that just want to communicate uh, on the app, or they they want to uh, they want to come and make a drive if we're going to have a meeting or something like that. So um, you know anyway. That, that, that's where to, that's where to find me perfect thank you so much uh it was a great pleasure talking with you thank you for for taking your time today also thank you for everyone that's watching and listening for joining us today as always i'll be back tomorrow with, our, with another episode bye bye awesome thank you robin bye